Alright guys, welcome back to the channel and latest roundup of wrestling game news, where today we have a bunch of reveals for WWE 2K24, including confirmation of a brand new DLC character, we have the full track list for the 2K24 soundtrack, new screenshots and new entrance videos, plus we also have an update on the announcers and how that could factor into my GM, while over on the AEW side of things, we also have some updates for AEW Fight Forever, including new paid and free DLC. DLC. So we're going to cover all of that in today's video, but before we do, if you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with all the latest announcements, then please do hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss out on future videos. So we've got quite a lot to get through today, starting with an update for AW Fight Forever, or DLC Forever, as despite being out less than 8 months, THQ Nordic have announced a third season pass which is available to purchase now for $16.99. The season 3 pass features 3 DLC packs, including Swerve to the Beach, which sees the addition of Swerve Strickland as a new playable character, and a new beach arena that comes with both day and night versions. Giant Swing in the Ring, which adds Claudio Castagnoli as a new playable character, and then Hater's Gonna Hate, which sees the addition of Jamie Hater. The Season 3 pass is also said to include 42 new skins and attire options, loads of new moves and premium music tracks, though it's unclear which pack or packs those are part of. Alongside the new Season Pass, THQ have also released some free DLC, which is said to be a thank you to fans for their continued support, with a free DLC titled Freebie for the fans. The free DLC, which you can download today, contains 5 new music tracks and 10 new ring attires, though there's no mention of who they belong to. Along with the new DLC offerings, THQ have also released a new patch 1.09 update that continues to include a lengthy list of bug fixes, as well as a new option for quick clear matches online, however the biggest addition to come out of the patch is the inclusion of 5 new wrestlers. Now when I say wrestlers, don't get too excited, as they're not actual AEW stars, they're actually 5 created wrestlers that were made by Adam Cole, Kenny Omega, Britt Baker, Orange Cassidy and Nyla Rose. All five characters can be found on the selection screen after installing the new patch update, with these including Kid Dreamer, Randy Delta, India Darling, Winter Sacramento and Wild Bear. The characters themselves aren't anything special, as they're literally characters that you could create yourself, so it's weird to see these patched in as part of the update. Moving over to WWE 2K24, this week has seen several reveals take place, as prior to the reveal of the showcase match list that I covered in a previous video, 2K also dropped the full entrance video for The Fiend Bray Wyatt. The version of The Fiend that was shown off in the video is taken from the Firefly Funhouse match at WrestleMania 35, which is one of 16 matches that were announced as part of Tuesday's showcase reveal. To show off the difference between the new version of The Fiend and the original version that was featured in 2K20, this comparison footage shows both entrances running side by side, where you can see that the new version comes with an updated entrance motion, though this isn't new for 2K24, as the motion is the one that was updated in 2K22 and originally planned for The Fiend prior to his release. As for the model, judging by the comparison, the mask on the new version looks a lot better than it did in 2K20, though the attires are pretty similar, with the only real difference being the shirt, as this is the Fiend's showcase attire from WrestleMania 36. Also updated is the Fiend's lantern, which appears backwards at the start of the motion and seems to be a lot more covered at points, which given the circumstances could be intentional. Along with the confirmation of The Fiend, Tuesday's showcase trailer also confirmed that we'll see Bray Wyatt in his Firefly Funhouse attire, which like The Fiend was originally planned for 2K22 and had a brand new entrance added, though it was left unused after Wyatt's release. So, so far we have The Fiend and Bray's Firefly Funhouse attires confirmed, though I'd imagine that we'll also see his most recent character model from 2K23, as well as the return of Uncle Howdy. Going back to The Fiend's entrance, you may have spotted another confirmation that was part of it, is should you take a look at the ringside area while he's in the corner, and you can see the addition of WWE ring announcer Samantha Irving. While Samantha has yet to be announced, the inclusion of her in this footage suggests that we may see two sets of ring announcers this year, as in the footage recorded at the recent preview event, all of the entrances were recorded in the Smackdown or Royal Rumble arenas where Mike Rome was featured as the ring announcer. 
Given the inclusion of Mike in the preview build and Samantha in the latest video, it's possible that we could see a choice of announcers this year, or perhaps Mike is assigned to SmackDown and Samantha to Raw. If there is two announcers, then this could also play into updates to MyGM, as we've heard very little on MyGM this year, with the only official updates being that we'll support all of the new match types, including ambulance matches, special guest referee matches, casket match, and the expanded backstage brawl, with three and four players. The reason I say the announcers could play a part in my GM is that if there's multiple announcers available, then I could definitely see them adding an announcer option when setting up the brand, with the option to draft either Mike Rome or Samantha, and then with the addition of licensed referees, I'd imagine that that too would also factor into the mode, with different referees having different wages that you'll have to factor into your budget. On that note though, I do want to specify that the inclusion of ring announcers and referees isn't confirmed for my GM, that's just me speculating on what I think we'll see. Moving on, our next set of reveals includes several new screenshots, the first of which seen the reveal of Drew McIntyre, as the WWE Games account shared this screenshot of Drew, which appears to show him in one of the WrestleMania arenas, which could be a hint at one of the unannounced matches from the 2K showcase, as Drew wasn't featured in the match list. Based on the screenshot, Drew's model looks to be very similar to 2K23, though it's hard to say if his ring attire has been updated as it's covered by his kilt. Following Drew, the next screenshot seen the reveal of Alba Fire, who was pictured alongside her tag team partner Isla Dawn as the Unholy Union. As we seen with Isla Dawn last week, Alba Fire's attire is also taken from her tag team match at Stand and Deliver, with a pair featuring matching attires, though the biggest takeaway from the screenshot is that there doesn't appear to be an entrance for them, as the motion shown here is the generic heel entrance. So it's pretty disappointing to see them included as a tag team with matching attires, but not having an entrance together, which is a similar situation to RK Bro in last year's game, as they were included as a tag team with Trons, but their tag team entrance wasn't patched into the game until well after release. Moving on to the latest screenshots, celebrating Valentine's Day, 2K released this image of the Heart Foundation that shows Brett the Hitman Heart and Jim the Anvil Nightheart as they make their entrance in the SummerSlam 88 arena. Based on the screenshot, both men appear the same as they were in 2K23, with both stars spotting the same attire, though we do know that Bret Hart will also have an all pink outfit as he was shown during the showcase trailer in an alternate outfit from WrestleMania 8. Also revealed on Valentine's Day, we got confirmation of the return of Dude Love, whose most recent appearance came as a hidden character in 2K22, as Dude was included as leftover content, though he did feature a brand new entrance video that went unused. The confirmation of Dude Love also suggests that we could see multiple versions of Mick Foley this year, perhaps even all three faces of Foley, as recent years have seen his inclusion limited to Cactus Jack, though with the return of Dude Love, it's possible that we could also see Mankind. Finally, in the most recent update, we have the reveal of the WWE 2K24 soundtrack, which also brings with it confirmation of the first DLC character, as 2K have announced that this year's soundtrack will be produced by Post Malone, who they also confirmed is set to join the roster as a playable character, as he'll be included in one of the post-launch DLC packs. Post inclusion makes him the third artist to appear in the series as a playable character, where he follows in the footsteps of Limp Bizkit frontman Fred Durst, who appeared in SmackDown Just Bring It, and more recently Machine Gun Kelly, who appeared as a DLC character in 2K22. As for the track list, this year's soundtrack includes 12 songs. We have two from Post Malone with Chemical and Laugh It Off. We have Hand Crushed by Mallet by 100 Gex. Put Your Hands Where My Eyes Can't See by Buster Rhymes. Motorcycle by Cult of Wall, Genesis by Grimes, Do It Faster by Military Gun, Big Rig by Pigs, Not That Nice by Speed, Mystery from Turnstile, House Fire from Tyler Childers, and Better Off by Yeet. So that's this year's soundtrack, along with all the latest reveals for WWE 2K24. Let me know what you make of them in the comments, and stay tuned to the channel for more. Until next time though, thank you so much for watching this video, have yourself an awesome day. And I'll catch you later.